Okay, welcome to the course, uh, Gyan course on Network Information Theory. I am Adrish Baraji from IIT Kanpur and we have uh, three other speakers. Our Gyan speaker is Professor Gerhard Kramer from Technical University of Munich. He is going to cover topics on network information theory. Before that, uh, myself Adrish Banerjee, Professor Rakesh Bansal of IIT Kanpur and Professor Sibiraj Pillai of IIT Bombay will cover topics from information theory, so as to make this course self-contained. So, I will start off with uh, today's lecture which is on measure of information. So, how do we quantify information? What is information? and how do we quantify information that is the topic of discussion today. So, start with a brief introduction and then I will talk about uh, different measures of information uh, and then I will define what is entropy, conditional entropy, uh, relative entropy, mutual information. I will talk about an, uh, an important inequality which we call as IT inequality. It has wide range of applications in proving results in information theory. And then I will talk about some properties of entropy, conditional entropy, relative entropy. In particular, I will talk about what is known as chain rule of en entropy and I will define what is a mutual information and I will define some properties of mutual information. So, let us start with the introduction. So, what, what are the expectations from this lecture? At the end of this lecture, you should be able to quantify what is information and you should know some basic properties of entropy, conditional entropy, relative entropy, uh, mutual information and things like that. Okay. So, let us start with measure of information. So, in 1928, I believe, Hartley gave this measure of information. So, what, how did he quantify information? He said, information provided by an observation of a discrete random variable x is given by log of L, where L is the number of possible values of x. So, what did he say? He said that more the possibilities, greater the information, right. So, for example, uh, if you consider uh, tossing of a coin, how many possibilities are there? Two head or tail and if you consider rolling of a dice, six, uh, six possibilities. So, if I roll a dice that will have more information compared to tossing of a coin. Why? Because tossing of a coin has only two possibility whereas, uh, rolling of a dice will have six possibilities. Okay. So, this was the definition, uh, this is how basically heartily quantify information. Now, what is the problem with this approach? What is the problem with quantifying information like this? Okay, let me give an example to illustrate this. So, let us say, okay, let us consider tossing of the coin, tossing of a coin, tossing of a coin. So, I have head, I have tail. Okay. In case A, I consider a fair coin. What is a fair coin? It will have 50 percent probability of uh, head and 50 percent probability of tail. Okay. Now, let us consider an unfair coin. Let us say case B is uh, an unfair coin where probability of head is point 99 and this is 0 0.01. Okay. Now, I am tossing a coin in both cases, case A and case B. Now, which has more information in case A or case B? Case A. Why? Because in case A, it is equally likely when I toss it, it is equally likely that I will get a head or a tail. Whereas, in case B, I know almost most of the time because with 0.99 probability I am getting head. So, most of the time I will get a head. So, when I am tossing the coin, now remember in both case A and case B, number of possibilities are same, right. But 
information content is not same because in this case if I toss you will have a hard time predicting where it is a head or tail you probably get it right 50 percent. But in the second case you can almost surely guess it correctly that you are going to get a head. So, in Hartley's measure, so Hartley did capture this fact that more possibility more information that is correct, but he did not capture the fact that with what probability those events are happening that he did not capture in his measure of information. Okay, so, that is the drawback of uh, Hartley's measure of information. So, I already explained what is wrong with Hartley's measure of information because in Hartley's measure of information both case A and case B have same information, but we know that it is not same information correct. So, Shannon defined this measure of information. So, if ith possible value of x has probability p i uh, and if we weigh the Hartley's uh, information by this uh, Hartley information which is log of 1 by p i by p i what we get is Shannon's measure of information. So, in Shannon's measure of information he is weighing this. So, it is this summation over all possible values of this x i basically uh, event uh, and p i log p i. So, basically if x takes l different possible values with, with basically probability p 1, p 2, p 3, p, uh, p l then Shannon's measure information is given by this. In case a it will be minus 0.5 log 0.5 uh, into 2 whereas, in the second case it will be 0 0.99 log 0 0.99 and uh, minus 0 0.01 log 0 0.01 and you can see that uh, the information that comes out in case A is more compared to case B. So, this fact was not captured by Hartley's measure information that you have to he did not take into account with what probability those events are happening. So, is, so not only the number of possible values of x, but we also need to consider with what probability those events are happening right. So, uh, if, if f is a real value function then we define the support of f as the subset of a domain where f takes non-zero value that is because when you are defining log of this function f, f has to be greater than equal to 0 because log of 0 is not defined. So, we are defining this entropy as minus summation p x log p x where we sum over the support set of p x. Okay. This can be written like this is nothing but expected value of minus log of p x. Okay. So, that is how basically uh, Shannon's measure of information is defined okay. and this takes care of the problem that we have in this in Hartley's measure of information that he did not consider the probability of occurrence of these events. Okay. Now, uh, just one more thing. So, this unit of log basically typically we consider log to the base 2 and the unit is known as bits okay. and that is the most commonly used unit. We always define, uh, we define this in terms of bits like 1 bits point something bits right. If we use uh, log natural log, the unit is known as nats, and if you if we use u, base 10, the unit is known as Hartley. So, this is how we are defining basically information. So, we are quantifying information by this entropy. Okay. Now, let us look at some properties of entropy. Uh, so, we can similarly define uh, we define entropy as expected expected value of minus log of p of x. Similarly, we could define the joint entropy between random variable x and y and that is nothing but expected value of minus log of joint distribution of p of, p of x and y. So, this is how we can similarly define a joint entropy function. 
Let us take an example. If x takes two value x1 and x2 with probability of x1 is p, so probability of x2 is 1 minus p, then the entropy is given by minus p log p minus 1 minus p log 1 minus p. This is also known as binary entropy function. I am denoting it by h of p. So, if I plot this h of p, it looks like this. So, this is binary entropy function, this is p, the maximum value is for p equal to 0.5, that is 1. Okay. Now, let us talk about uh, uh, it inequality. Now, what does it inequality says? For any positive real number r, log of r is less than equal to r minus 1 log of e with equality happening if r is equal to 1. You can prove it many way. Let me just plot it to see how this function looks like. If this is my r, log of r will be at r equal to 1, it will be 0. So, this will be like, like this and what will be r minus 1? It is a straight line passing through yeah, it will be like this, right. So, you can prove it uh, many ways. The way we will prove it is at, at r equal to 1, they are touching each, each other and the slope for r less than uh, 1, it is different from what sl slope it has for r greater than 1. So, the graphs of uh, you know log of r and r minus 1, they coincide at r equal to 1. But if you look at the slope, basically it is 1 by r, it is greater than 1 for r less than 1, whereas it is less than 1 for r greater than 1. So, they basically these graphs will never cross each other okay? and they touch at r equal to 1. And if you then multiply by log of e, you will get this relation log of r is less than r minus 1 log of e. This is a very useful result because in entropy you have this uh, expression of the form minus p i log p i right. So, log log p i can be upper bounded by this r minus 1 and then we use this to prove many results. So, this i t inequality is a very useful inequality we will be using it a lot in proving properties of entropy. Okay. So, this is less than equal to r minus 1 with equality happening only when r is equal to 1. If you multiply by log of e, you get this relationship. Okay. So, let us talk about properties of entropy. Uh, again, we are talking about discrete random variable at the moment. Uh, we will talk about continuous random variable later on. So, we have a discrete random variable x that takes l possible values. So, the first result that we are going to show is the entropy of x is upper bounded by log of l and lower bounded by 0. With equality happening on the left hand side, if and only if probability of x is 1 for some x and for all other x obviously, probability of x will be 0 if it is x probability of x is 1 for some x and similarly on the right hand side this happens with equality when p of x is 1 by l for all x that means when x is uniformly distributed then the entropy is maximum we already had an example here uh, where this was uniformly distributed and we saw that okay this has higher information content then this case. So, let us prove this. So, if you look at the expression for entropy, we have terms of the form minus p i log p i. Right? Now, if p of x is 1, what do you get? Log of 1 will be 0. So, that will be 0 and for all, all other, if it is p of x is 1 for some x, for other x, it will be p of x will be 0. So, that is basically then entropy will be 0 for p of x equal to 1. 
and what happens when p of x lies between 0 and 1? Log of a fraction that will be negative some negative number and then you are multiplying it by a negative of p of x. So, negative negative is po positive and p of x is a, num is a fraction between 0 and 1 which is a positive. So, what you get is a positive number. So, when p of x lies between 0 and 1 this quantity will be a positive number correct. So, when you sum it over all basically L possibility that will be a positive number. So, what we have shown is h of x is greater than equal to 0 true it is 0 when p of x is 1 otherwise it is greater than 0 ok. So, we have shown the left hand side any questions here is this clear hmm? ok. Now, let us prove the right hand side. I have already said if this is 0 if and only if p of x is equal to x for some x and there is only one such x. Now, let us prove the right hand side. So, what we are going to show is h of x minus log of l is less than equal to 0. This is what we are going to prove now. If we can prove that then basically we will prove that h of x is basically less than equal to log of l. So, by definition of entropy h of x is given by this expression correct minus log of l. Now, I am writing minus log of p x as log of 1 by p x. Now, log of l I can write as summation p of x into log of l because summation of p of x over all x would be 1. So, if I write this as summation p of x log l then I take that summation p of x common are you with me so far. Now, if I take summation p of x common what I get from here is log of 1 by p x and here this was summation p of x log of l. So, I get log of l right. Now, this is of the form log a minus log b this is this will be log a by b. So, if I do that I get this fine. Now, this is where I am going to use the i t inequality I talked about. The i t inequality said log of r is less than equal to r minus 1 with equality happening when r is equal to 1 ok. So, I have this uh, log of r is less than equal to r minus 1 log of e right. Now, I multiply by p of x p of x I get 1 by l and the summation of p of x ok. So, I sum it over all uh, x which belongs to support group of this. So, this will be less than 1 minus summation of this will be 1. So, that will become 0 ok. Now, uh, if you notice here we have used an inequality here like right? log of r is less than equal to r minus 1 right. So, when r equal to 1 what happens when r equal to 1 p of x is 1 by l. So, this brings us to the this result we said h of x is satisfies this right hand side uh, this inequality with equality if and only if p of x is 1 by l. So, when x is uniformly distributed entropy is maximum of a discrete random variable ok. So, we have shown that for a discrete random variable the information content or the entropy is greater than equal to 0 and is upper bounded by log of l and the upper bound is achieved when 
that random variable x is uniformly distributed. Okay. So, this is the first property that we have shown. This I am kind of skipping, I mean this is just uh, entropy in a different base. If I want to write entropy in base B, how is it related to entropy in base A? So, this you can write log of P to the base B in this particular fashion and so if I have entropy which is in base B, this will be summation of minus P log uh, P to the base B. So, I do this summation, if I do that I get basically this. So, it is just change of basically base if I want to use it, this is how they are related. Okay. This is straightforward, I am just skipping this. Okay. Now, let us define what is conditional entropy. Okay. So, I am first going to define conditional entropy of a discrete random variable based on a particular event. So, uh, what I am talking about is, so I have two random variables x and y. So, x let us say takes l different values x 1, x 2, x 3, Excel. Similarly, y also takes various values. You can call it y1, y2, ym or something like that. These are two random variables I have. So, the first term that I am defining is what is the conditional entropy of x given y is some value, let us say y1 or y2 or y. Okay. So, this is conditioned on a particular event basically. So, y can take you know let us say m values, I am talking about what is the uncertainty in x given that I know y is y 1. This is what I am interested in. Okay. This is given as summation minus uh, p of x given y log of p of x given y, where sum, I sum over all x which belongs, belongs to support group of this. Okay, so, this is essentially uh, conditional expectation of basically minus log of p of x given y given this particular event has occurred. Now, I can also define what is the conditional entropy of x given y. Now, I am talking about x given y. Okay, now, this can be written as uncertainty of x given a particular event of y has happened multiply by that probability of y and sum over all y's. Okay. So, this is uh, basically uh, the conditional entropy of x given y. So, if I write in terms of probability condition is uh, entropy of x given y will be minus summation joint distribution of p of x y because I am multiplying this by p of y, p of y into p of x y. So, what I will get is a joint distribution of x and y log of p of x given y. This is where lot of people make mistake when you ask them to derive. Uh, so, this is condition on a event, this is condition on all basically values of y. So, this is defined. So, this is how it is defined condition on a event of y and this is how it is defined or conditioned on y. So, if I know this, I multiply it by probability of y and then I sum it over all y's. I do this for all y's. This is how I can get a conditional entropy of x given y. Is this clear the difference here? Now, I will define what is known as relative entropy. So, if x and x hat are two discrete random variable with, with same set of possible values, then relative entropy or diver, information divergence between p of x and p of x hat is defined in this particular way. So, it is summation p of x log of p of x. Uh, divided by p of x hat. So, you can also look at it as uh, this is the expected value with respect to x of log of p of x given p of x hat. 
Now, this is a measure of closeness between two distributions. If x and x hat are you know closely related or their distribution is same, then you what you would notice is this ratio will be close to 1 and then that will be this divergence. I mean, if this if this is 1, divergence is 0. We will show that this divergence is greater than or equal to 0. So, closer distribution, closer smaller will the value of the divergence. Okay. I am just going to compute divergence uh, and again I am going to use this result sometime later. So, if I have a random variable x that takes L possible values and let us say I have another random variable x hat which is uniformly distributed and it of, of obviously takes same L possible values. So, distribution of p of x hat is 1 by L and if I compute the divergence between p of x and p of x hat the notation used is this. So, this is nothing but expectation with respect to x of this quantity. So, this will be p of x divided by p of x hat, p of x hat is 1 by L. So, this can be written as expected value of log of p of x divided by 1 by L. So, I can move L uh, in the numerator. So, this is expected value of log of p of x. Now, expected value of log of L will be log of L. There is no uh, random uh, uh, variable here and then the remaining value is expected value of log of p of x. That I am writing as minus of expected value of minus of p of x and what is this? This entropy. So, what I have shown here is divergence between p of x and p of x hat is equal to log of l minus h of x. Okay. So, that brings us to the next result which you uh, want to show that divergence is greater than or equal to 0. Again as I said there are multiple ways you can prove it. I am just going to show minus of divergence is uh, less than or equal to 0 and I am going to use make use of my famous favorite it inequality. Okay. So, I did minus of this. So, divergence is uh, summation of uh, expectation of log uh, p of x by q of x with expectation with respect to p. Now, since I did minus, so this became log of q x by p x. Okay. So, this is from the definition of divergence. Correct. Now, log of r that is less than or equal to r minus 1. So, I am using making use of the it inequality to get this result. Now, this I can write as summation of q x minus summation of p x. So, that would be basically 1 minus 1 that is 0. So, then I have shown that minus of divergence is less than or equal to 0. So, divergence has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, I am going to show you another, another result which is very, very commonly used that is the chain rule of entropy. It is used very, very widely in proving lots of results in information theory. Okay. So, what does chain rule says? It tells us a way of writing the joint entropy in terms of conditional entropy. Okay. So, joint entropy between x 1, x 2, x 3, x n can be written as h of x 1 plus h of x 2 given x 1 plus h of x 3 given x 1, x 2 plus dot 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 x n given x 1, x 2, x 3, x n minus 1. That is what the chain rule for entropy says. Okay. And how does it follow? I can write the joint entropies in terms of these conditional probabilities, right? I can write p of x1, x2 as p of x2 given x1 into p of x1. I can write p of x1, x2, x3 as p of x1 into p of x2 given x1 into p of x3 given x1, x2. Okay. 
So, I just use this and in the definition of entropy wherever they ask for this, this I will substitute this and I will get expression in terms of this. So, what is the entropy joint entropy of this? This is nothing but expectation of this minus log of this joint probability x 1, x 2, x 3, x n. Now, this can be written like this. So, I have product terms here log of think about a, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 that can be written as log of a 1 plus log of a 2 plus log of a 3 plus log of a n. So, this when I put substitute this by this term, this log of product term will become summation and what I will have here is expected value of minus log of these conditional probabilities which is nothing but my conditional entropies. So, I can write this uh, joint entropy in terms of conditional entropy. So, for example, if I ask you to write h of x 1, x 2, x 3, you can write it as h of x 1 plus h of x 2 given x 1 plus h of x 3 given x 1, x 2. You can write it multiple ways. So, I can write this as h of x 3 plus h of x 2 given x 3 plus h of x 1 like that you can write in many different basically ways, but this is a very useful result. We are you will see that we are going to use this chain rule again and again in proving many of the results. So, you have to understand and this can be as I said this can be applied in multiple ways you can apply this multiple ways. Okay. I am going to define now a term called mutual information. I okay. will explain why this name mutual and information, but let me first uh, define it and then I will come to that. So, by definition mutual information between two random variables x and y is defined like this. So, this can be written as divergence between the joint distribution of x and y and the marginal distribution. So, this this I can write as divergence of p of x y and p of x p of y right. I can write this as divergence between p of x y and p of x p of y. Okay. So, this is from the definition of mutual information. Now, let us just simplify this. I can write joint distribution between x and y as p of y into p of x given y. So, p of y, p of y cancels out. So, that is becomes this. Now, I can write summation p of x y log 1 by p x as minus log p x and the numerator term I have is this. This is a numerator term correct. Now, I am summing over x and y right. Is there any is there any let us sum over y. I can take this out. If I sum this over y what do you get? P of huh, p of x marginal distribution of x right. So, this will then become p if I sum over y this will become p of x log of p of x. Now, I have to sum it over x. Here I am writing plus as minus minus. Okay. Now, what is this? 
from the definition of entropy this is the entropy of x and what about this from the definition this is the conditional entropy of x given y ok. So, what is mutual information uncertainty in x minus uncertainty in x given y. So, think about it. So, knowing x this is uncertainty now knowing y what is the reduction in uncertainty this is uncertainty in x knowing y this is uncertainty in x. So, the difference will be the reduction in uncertainty having known y. So, think about it this information y is conveying about x. What I have shown you is mutual information is the information conveyed by y what, what is the amount of information conveyed by y about x. Now, I am going to show you this is same as whatever information x is conveying about y and that is why the term mutual ok. I am going to show you this is same as h of y minus h of y given x and that is why this term mutual information. So, this is the information which the other random variable is conveying about you know x and y ok. So, I have shown you this in the previous slide that mutual information between x and y can be written as uncertainty in x minus uncertainty in x given y ok. What result are we using? Chain rule ok. We are using chain rule. So, using chain rule the uncertainty or entropy of x and y can be written as uncertainty in x plus uncertainty in y given x. The same thing can be written as uncertainty in y given uncertainty in x given y. Now, these two are same you bring this here you bring this here you get this. So, this is mutual information x and y mutual information between y and x. So, what we have shown is whatever information y conveys about x the same information x is conveying about y. So, you can basically so I can write mutual information as h of x given minus h of x given y or h of y minus h of y given x is the definition of mutual information clear. Okay. Now, here we are going to show that given two discrete random variable condition conditioning cannot increase entropy conditioning on a random variable. So, what we are going to show is the uncertainty in x given y is less than equal to uncertainty in x and with equality happening when x and y are independent. This you can see in intuitively if x and y are independent y would not convey any information about x. So, there would not be any reduction in uh, uncertainty given uh, y right. So, again you can prove this result in many different ways. I am going to make use of the fact that divergence is greater than equal to 0 and mutual information can be written in terms of divergence. So, I am going to use those results. So, mutual information between x and y can be written as uncertainty in x minus uncertainty in x given y. I can write mutual information as divergence between the joint distribution and the marginals ok and we know the divergence is greater than equal to 0. So, this is greater than equal to 0. So, we have proved h of x given y is less than equal to h of x and when will the equality happen? When this is equal to this. So, that is a condition for independence. So, we have also proved this conditioning on a random variable 
cannot increase in entropy. However, conditioning on a particular event can increase entropy. So, I was talking about uh, you know a random variable y and y takes value y 1, y 2, y let us say y m. Okay. What I am saying is if I compute uncertainty in x given y that will be this. However, if I consider this uncertainty in x given y is some y i and its relation with h of x, this can be this can be greater than also less than also it can happen, but conditioning on y this is less than equal to. Now, similar to uh, chain rule for entropy, we could also define chain rule for mutual information. I am just uh, stating it here. It just follows from uh, the definition that I can write this mutual information in terms of uh, entropy and conditional entropy and then I can write this joint distribution in terms of uh, apply chain rule here. So, I can write them in terms of that. Okay. And similarly, there is a chain rule also applicable for uh, divergence. So, what I have done so far is I have quantified what is information okay, and I have uh, defined what is entropy, conditional entropy, conditioned on a particular event, conditioned on a random variable, what is a joint entropy, how you can write joint entropy in terms of uh, summation of this conditional entropy, it inequality, what is mutual information, okay, uh, what is relative entropy or divergence and divergence is greater than equal to 0. So, these results I have have so far introduced. 